What's up everyone? Welcome to the beginning of the series Vigor Guide and Tips 2023. I have been playing Vigor since 2018. I wanted to share my own advice and suggestions as well as those from the Vigor community on how you start playing this game. It's mainly for the new or newish players Hello. but for those veterans watching I will be doing a whole load more episodes over the year so if you have any tips advice suggestions that you want to share watch to the end of the video let's start with episode one what is the main aim in vigor to go into encounters looting the maps for resources which you bring back to your shelter to upgrade it to the max the first thing that you will appreciate while playing Vigor is a good headset. You want to be able to pinpoint those footsteps, the direction, their distance, even the material they're walking on. After going through the tutorial, you will get some weapons to help you get started. It is a loot and shoot survival game, so you do not have to kill to survive the encounters. This means that you can play the game in so many different ways. Zero to Hero as it sounds, means taking nothing in with you, looting and scooting, meaning that you gain everything, but you don't lose anything if you die. Bear in mind, though, that you can't punch or defend yourself without a weapon in your hands. Remember, if you die in an encounter, you lose it all. Your loadout that you've brought in with you, everything that you've found in the encounter, gone. The only way to save it is if you pay for insurance when you're in the lobby. Make sure you check your inventory before you choose your next map. All the items you bought back from your previous encounter will be in your inventory, except resources collected, wire, mementos, airdrops, gun parts, etc. You can set and save loadouts, which saves time. But you might want to leave it a while until you have a collection of weapons and heals to bring out before you're worrying all about that. If you decide to take a gun out early on, it will normally be a common Thompson or a PM, but be aware of your amount of ammo. You have to craft ammo like you do with the guns. So normally around 60 to 120 would cover most situations. But it depends if you're hunting or just protecting yourself or if you have really bad potato aim. You will get warnings when you go to click on the encounter map if you haven't got a loadout, you don't have any ammo or even if you've got too much in your inventory. Saying this, the less you take out, the more room you have to loot up. I recommend you always take out some heals. Disinfectant is cheap and easy to craft. Always try to find some heals in the Outlands and organise them before you go back into another encounter. Once you have a good stock of them, you can stop worrying. Work out how you are going to play this encounter. What are your goals? Are you trying to complete daily or seasonal challenges? Are you trying to get more XP to gain something on the battle pass or maybe trying to get certain loot for upgrades in the shelter? Will you put insurance on, boost or maybe leave it this time once you see who you're up against? Check the lobby for sweats with high levels, rare guns and weird outfits or are there more lower levels with common guns and a green coat? Don't let the outfits distract or confuse you though. Even I can wear a green coat. As you go in, decide with the map in your hand how you're going to play this encounter. Slow and steady, looting a certain area before leaving, maybe avoiding the shooting, or are you going in guns blazing and risking it all to get the high level loot at the hotspots? Talking of the map, let's take a moment to explain it in some detail. You can pull your map up at any time during the encounter. We recommend that you do this in a bush, in a building or laying down. Do not stand in the middle of the road or in a field with your map out. You will be an easy target and boom, someone will headshot you. You will be the orange yellow triangle. If you're in a team, they will have blue triangles. And your marker that you put on the map is a yellow star, 
which you will then be able to see on your compass at the top of the screen. Your teammates star markers are yellow too but will have a number. You can ping which will show up as an orange yellow. Your teammates ones are blue and this shows up on your map as well. These pings are useful in teams and if you double tap the ping will show up as a red skull with three lines indicating danger. Study the map for a moment and decide what you want to do and the route indicating your way out. Exits are marked in orange and I'd like an arrow pointing up with a plus inside it. Reminds me of a tent. Remember this is not a battle royale. You can exit at any point during the encounter. Look out for locked exits which have a red padlock over them. These need certain resources like fuel or wire which you have to collect en route. Once the exit is unlocked, it stays that way and also makes a sound to the rest of the Outlanders indicating that a locked exit has been unlocked. Which one will depend on how much they were paying attention. Actually, while recording, we found out that not all locked exits have this sound. It seems that only the locked exits that have a gate attached like in Victorson Station and Falcanton, have this sound effect. We're not sure if this is a glitch or not. On Falcanton, there is an underground exit which does not need any resources to open, but you have to find the lock in the cave. Once opened, you can relock it by the exit entrance. On Gruntime Valley, there is the famous middle exit which is awkward with ladders and jumps. The ladders can be cut and therefore closed with an X over it. Hotspots are normally the blue icons and outlanders are normally informed when they have been activated. There is always three comm stations which controls the airdrop, for example changing location or booby trapping it, etc. Signal, which tells you the locations of all of the outlanders, not in jammers. Time Safe has two buttons which you have to find and press within a short period of time to unlock the actual safe. Bard House has wooden boards on the windows and doors which you have to slowly take down. Beware as you will be an easy target while doing this. Once you are through you can then have access to the safe inside which normally takes two minutes to unlock. Container has three locks but can be broken with bullets or explosions. It depends if you want to be noisy or not. Disruptor is a big jammer and has a radius that stops anyone inside of it being detected by signal devices outside, like signal or portables. It also stops others seeing your mark if you have picked up an airdrop, become threat or become a team killer. The small white triangles with black borders are places to discover points of interest and become black triangles once found. There are two achievements to do with this. The three red wiggly arrows on the map are the indication of the direction that the radiation wave will come. Your tomato timer at the beginning of the encounter gives you around 10 minutes before the wave starts to take over the map. Once in the radiation your health bar will go down with a cross hashed mark and there is no way to gain that health back. Iodine tablets will stop the radiation temporarily but once that timer goes off you should really be making your way out of the encounter. The green circle shows the airdrop area and it will land somewhere within this zone. The area can be moved once during the encounter with the comm station. The outlander moving it will know the exact location on the map. At eight minutes into the encounter, you will hear a plane come over the map which drops off the airdrop. Once landed on the map, the green circle turns into a green 3D crate. 
but once the airdrop has been looted, the mark turns into a green figure running which flashes on and off. The only way to stop others seeing the mark is to have the comm station change to stealth mode before the plane is due to come over. You may find a red box somewhere in the encounter which holds the special crate, the airdrop. Once looted, you will show up on the map like a normal airdrop, so be careful and get out while you can. When you have a phone jewel, a red handset flashes on and off on the map indicating their whereabouts. You could go and have a fight or use the opportunity to avoid them. A red skull and crossbones means an outlander has got threat, four kills or more. The mark flashes on and off, so watch that they aren't coming for you. In a team, duos or trios, if you happen to kill a team member, you become a team killer and therefore are marked on the map with a blue skull. You cannot loot your dead team member's death box and the rest of the map will probably come for you. If you find crows suddenly flying up in the air near to an exit, it indicates that there's more than you in the area, so beware. As a new player, you may find hiding a good technique to avoid others. Be careful of wall penetration, as certain ammo will go through the wood. Also, your guns may poke through the walls indicating your location. Many outlanders have very good headsets, so will be listening out for movement. Crouching is quieter than walking, and crawling or going prone is quieter still. Using the hay emote when you hear others around you is a great way to tell other outlanders that you are new, friendly and just looting. Many veteran players will enjoy making friends, helping you to find more loot and even protect you as you make your way safely out with the drop. Be careful though, as some outlanders are just hunters. They may even pretend to be friendly, killing you when your back is turned. If you find yourself having to defend yourself, then be aware of your ammo and crouch while shooting. This brings your crosshairs in and always try to aim for the head. All the guns are one shot headshot kills, even the little pistols. Third person works best for short range fights and ADS for the longer range. There are two other modes other than the encounter mode, shootout and eliminations. Both of these modes are great practice for the feel of the game, sounds and movement. It doesn't cost any gear either, and you get crates and XP as rewards. Sometimes, when you load up the game, Vigor have notices which are worth reading and taking note. They can have information on the game or upcoming events. This could mean hardcore players are out in force. You might want to join Vigor the game on their socials, so that you are more aware of what is going on and maybe we might see you in the regular dev streams. Normally your first 10 to 15 solo games are against other new players. Use these well and don't waste them. They give you a chance to play the encounters fully without all the other veteran players ruining things. Remember, we all die in vigour. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did it'd be awesome if you could leave it a like. I do plan to make a full series over the year of all the different tips and advice and suggestions for new players as well as not so new players. So if you've got any suggestions that you want to add maybe pop them in the comments below or even on discord. You never know it may make the next video. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and make sure those notifications are on. I do stream on Twitch three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 6 till 9 UK time. So it'll be awesome to see you there. OK, bye bye for now. Should we go down there? We're going to get involved. See you in a bit. Oh, yeah, we've got hits. Yes, yes, it worked. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's fantastic.